All right. If you have your Bible this morning, turn to John chapter 19. John chapter 19, and we're going to look at uh, verse 19 to verse 22. The title of the message this morning is, What I Have Written, I Have Written. Now, if that sounds familiar, I have preached this message before. Um, and I felt led of the Lord to, to preach it again this morning. I think it's probably been a couple of years. Some of them have been so long that we, we've turned over this whole congregation. I don't know how many times. I mean, some of the messages I preached in the beginning, nobody's ever heard because nobody's still here that, that heard it in the first place. I don't know what that says about my preaching. Uh, <clears throat> might drive you far and wide. I don't know. But anyway, uh, the title of the message is, What I Have Written, I Have Written. John chapter 19, starting at verse 19. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am, or that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Let's pray. Father, may you bless the message now, Lord, and I pray, Father, that um, may us consider the things that we say and do that they're going to be written down. And, Father, may we write, uh, may we write something useful and helpful, Father, and uh, blessing to others. Thank you for those here today. Uh, Lord, I, for those who were not able to be here, may you be with them and watch over them. And, Father, bless the message now in and, and, and its intent. Lord, help us to take these things to heart and be serious about life and ask these things for Jesus' sake. Amen. This message may not be what you think it's going to be about, but I just wonder if Pilate thought about on that day, he said, what I have written, I have written, but it wasn't just what he put on the cross. He said, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. And the Jews didn't like that because it was like making a statement that he was the king of the Jews. They said, he said he was, just put that on there. He said, no, what I've written, I've written. But you know, Pilate didn't realize that God wrote down some other things he said that day. Didn't he? I mean, some of the things that Pilate said, you know, uh, that, little, that, little, uh, that little conversation he had with Jesus where, you know, uh, Jesus talked about the truth and Pilate said, what is truth, and walked out of the room. The Lord wrote that down. You know, I'd hate to be Pilate. The things he said are not only written in a book, but they're written in an eternal book. <laughs> Forever. You imagine... The folks that hung around Jesus had to be careful. They had to be careful what they said. Why? It might have got recorded in a book. And if it was recorded in this book, it was recorded for all eternity. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but what? My words will not pass away. You know, this thing could put you in a bad light. I bet you didn't know it though, but you're writing a book. He said over there in Matthew 12, 36, and this is what Pilate didn't realize, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Now I'm going to say there's a big, big difference between the book you're writing and the book that an unsaved man or woman is writing. Uh, the book that they're writing, they'll give account for every idle word, and it goes into the fire with them. Because God doesn't, the Bible says that the memory of the wicked, um, the memory of the wicked shall rot. You ever wonder why I can't remember the rich man in, John, uh, in um, like Luke 16? I mean, he remembered Lazarus. Why, why didn't he say the rich man's name? A certain rich man. Come on, which one? Jesus is like, a certain rich man. Can't remember it. Because he says the name of the wicked shall rot. You think God's going to remember the, you know, uh, the, the, the Hollywood stars and, and the great uh, sports players of this world? Do you think it's ever going to even come into his mind? He's going to forget about them. It says the name of the wicked shall rot. But he remembered Lazarus, didn't he? Hmm. You know what you're writing gets recorded down, and that thing's forever. Now, there are certain things that are, when the Lord comes to it, 
he can't make it out because it's covered in blood. He's just, you know, he's, he's going along there. So, well, I can't read that. That's all covered in blood. And I can't read. Hopefully you don't have a whole book that's just covered in blood. <laughs> but I'm glad a good portion of it is. You know, when the Lord puts on his rose-colored, it, actually it's blood-stained glasses, but his rose-colored glasses, uh, he can't see that print of those things that uh, I've confessed and gotten right over. Now, there'll be some things that'll get brought to the judgment. Now, I've told you before, if you can work them out, work them out. Because you don't want to take them up there with you. Because then you've got to explain how come you weren't forgiving when you were forgiven. So you better be on the right side of that thing big time. If there's anything you can work out, you work out. Here's what Paul tells the believer. Uh, he said in 2 Corinthians, turn there, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 2. And he says, Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Paul had, Paul had some folks that were in his book. He says, you're our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Paul tells the believer they're a written epistle that people read. You know, we say, you're an open book. We say that, don't we? You're writing an epistle. You're writing a book, whether you know it or not. And it's known and read of all men. And one of these days, it's going to be read before the judgment seat of Christ. Look at Job 19, verse 23. And I don't know if I would have said this or not. I guess that uh, under the circumstances Job was under, he said it. He said in Job 19, 23, Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. Surprise! <laughs> 42 chapters. I mean, go going over the whole entire thing of what Job went through, and they were recorded in a book. He got what he wished for. Do you know that he's accusing God of everything in, that, in those 42 chapters? I mean, he gets through the first two, and you're like, Job, that's wonderful. But after those first couple chapters, man, he's, he is saying things and accusing God of doing wrong, and he was right, and I'll, keep my, I'll maintain my integrity no matter what, and leave me alone so I can swallow down my own spit. I mean, he's just going on and on and on. Now, the Lord has the, the last laugh, if you will, when the Lord gets a hold of him and says, You know, those fellows had questions. i got a few questions for you. He says, Gird up thy loins like a man, and answer thou me. Brother, when God's talking to you like that, I'm telling you, you're about to get the tongue lashing of your life. When the Lord gets through with Job, Job says, I abhor myself from repentant dust and ashes. He says, I am the worm that you think that I am, and that you say that I am, I am. You know, that's Israel, man. They've been trusted in their own righteousness, and one of these days God's going to have a heart-to-heart -heart with them, and they're going to repent in dust and ashes. Look forward to that day. Um, but he got his words written down in a book. Psalm 45.1 says, My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made, touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Like the scribe is supposed to be a ready writer. Um, you don't know it, but you're, you're writing a book, Christian. You're writing a book. Now, I just, I just want to ask you a few questions about your book. You know, this is a book review, if you will. And the first thing I want to ask you is, is uh, what kind of book is it? You know, you, you can't judge a book by its cover, and I won't do that. I won't judge a book by its cover, okay? Uh, you really got to get into the book. Sometimes they put these stupid covers on books, you know? Uh, one of the one of the best Bibles I ever owned, as far as being comfortable to the eye and that I love to read out of, had a New Age cover on it. I mean, you'd have thought that I mean, it looked like an NIV cover or something, or worse, you know. And um, but that I still have. I'll bring it in someday, and you'll 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 agree with me. It's the awful cover that it's got. You know, I mean, there's no way we'd guess that's a King James Bible, but yet that print is so. Relaxing to the eye, pleasant. It, I, I don't know, just something about it that I just fell in love with, and I just read the thing till it fell apart, and I've glued it and bound it, and 
And, uh, but I still have it. Why? Because I can't part with it. I just, you know, but I'd do anything to change that cover. I thought about just taking a marker and just, you know, I'll bring it in sometime and show you. But I, don't ju I can't judge that book by its cover, that's for sure. Um, so what kind of book are you writing? Uh, book of action and adventure? I prefer that. You know? Or is it going to be fantasy or a drama? A lot, of, a lot of folks like to write fantasy. In other words, the only thing that's going on in your life is what's going on in your head. And if you were what you fantasized, wow, we'd have quite a show, wouldn't we? But you know, you never are what those things are. Now, I think you, I think you, get, you, know, you, get, a, you get a dream big, you know, or, or if you want to put it that way. But I think certain things need to be reality. I think, you know, I think uh, writing a, a fiction, that's no good. I mean, this has got to be a nonfiction book. This has got to be truth. Uh, this has got to be action about action. You never read those books that bore you to death, they go on and on, but there's never any action. Or just a book of drama. Can we get no drama, please? Easy on the drama. More on the action. Now, I tell you, I do, I do love a, a good action movie. But I do prefer that there be, you know, you know, the dialogue does matter. But I can do away with all, uh, a, a lot of the drama that goes on. Is that all your book's going to be about is drama and no action? He said in James 1.22, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Ephesians 2.10, For we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. God wants you to do something. He wants you to do something. Not just be hearers, but doers. And that way, you know, your book's going to have some action in it. And you know what? People see that. You know, people, uh, most of you have neighbors that knew you went to church this morning. They watched you drive off. They noticed that your uh, driveway was empty. They know, they, they, they know every Wednesday night whether you go to church or not. They see that. That's some action on your part and known and read of all men. You know, every time, every time you get in your car and come to church, you condemn the world. Do you know that? You condemn the world. Because most of the world's not doing that. Every time Noah put a nail in that boat and his three boys, every time they put a nail in that ark, they condemn the world. Because they believe something that the rest of the world didn't believe, and they said, y'all going to perish! Now, the world doesn't understand that it's Salvation is not through a church, but they understand that where you're going is where you found out about it. And that's the thing that condemns them. If you write in a book of fantasy, uh, your life cannot be the sum total of a fantasy in your head. It's got to be something else. There's got to be some, some things that you're doing. Now listen, here's what I want to tell you. God didn't call you to be great. Thank God he didn't call none of us to be great, but he didn't call you to be faithful. He doesn't talk about being great in there one time. I mean, there's some great men the Bible talks about, but he didn't call you to be great. But he did call you to be faithful, and he did call you to do something. And that's important. Now, who is the main character in your book? Is your book an autobiography? Is it all about you? <laughs> or is it a tribute to the greatest man that ever walked on the face of the earth? Now, some folks think that might have been Barack Obama. Or some other lame individual. But they would be extremely wrong, wouldn't they? Uh, that's about Jesus Christ. He said, looking unto Jesus, Hebrews 12, 2, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. All I know is that the, the book begins with Jesus Christ, and it ends with Jesus Christ. He's the author and the finisher. And you need him to help you write that book. Third thing is, will there be any names in your book? You know, he says over there, Revelation 21, 27, and there shall no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they that are written in the Lamb's book of life. In the Lamb's book of life, there are names. And what I'm asking you, for your particular book, are there any names in it? Or is it just yours? 
you know, I, 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 me, 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 <laughs> all the way through. Is there anybody else's name in it? I mean, is there anybody else recorded there that because of you, as a direct result of you, through the uh, work of the Holy Spirit, somebody else got in your book and said, that believed on Christ? You got any names in there? Is anyone going to make it out of this mess of sin, of death, because of you? Is it in your book? Now, if it's just going to be about you, it's going to be an awful long book. It's going to be kind of dull, too. I'm not saying you're dull, but I'm just saying if it's too much information about one individual. You know, you have to build characters. It's so much better when you're reading along, you know, and you've got all these different characters in the book. And listen, the more people you have in your book, the better it's going to be. So do you have any, do you have any names in your book? Uh, what will your book be filled with? Will it be filled with truth or fiction? He said in Psalms 26, 7, that I may publish with a voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Um, is, is it going to be truth from God's word or is it going to be the fiction of this world? You would say, well, Christians wouldn't do that. You know what they, you know what they yield to now? Philosophy. Uh, worldly wisdom. Uh, the uh, science falsely so-called. Don't tell me. It could be filled with that junk. But the question is, 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 is your book going to be filled with the truth? I'll tell you what, what are you quoting? I do a lot of quoting. What are you quoting in your book? Is it God's Word or some, uh, some other uh, lame authority? Some magazine or some, uh, some book you got out of college or whatever? Is it the truth of God's Word or is it that? It's important. What's it filled with? Will anyone be able to find the truth by reading your life, your book? Can they read through it and find the truth? Or is it obscured from all the worldly things to where they can't tell? You know, what's the one question? Is there enough, uh, if, if you were put on trial for being a Christian, is there enough evidence to convict you? There ought to be. Uh, he said in 1 Timothy 2, 4, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. How are they going to come to the knowledge of the truth? Listen, most folks don't make it inside a church to hear the gospel. You know who they hear it from? They hear it from you. You know what the first time they hear it from? It's from your life. Not out of your mouth. They hear it from your conversation. They hear it from your walk. That's the first time they hear the gospel. Then it makes them want to say, Hey, I want to ask you a question. Amen? I tell you, that's good. When people go and tell you, now, if they, I don't mind being called a Bible thumper, Bible banger, whatever they want to call me, uh, uh, Jesus freak, uh, a holy roller. I don't think I'm a holy roller, though, but I'll take it. You know, anything like that's okay. But when they call me a hypocrite, you want to take notes, say, why do you think I'm a hypocrite? And then, if you are, you are. I mean, you want to just fess up to it. But I want to know that. They can call me the other stuff. Because that means they looked at my life, and it brought them under conviction. They looked at my life and it made them question something about themselves. And when somebody comes to you and says, I'm going to ask you a question. And they ask you a Bible question. Do you know why they asked you that? Because something in your life propelled them, it convicted them, or the Holy Ghost used your life to convince them, to ask you. That's a good thing. You know, God put truth in this book so you can put truth in yours. And your, your book ought to be filled with truth. question is, how do you think your book will end? That's a big question. I know that when um, Jesus said about a woman that anointed him um, for, his, uh, for his death, she, he said in Mark 14, 8, she had done what she could. Man, I hope the Lord says that to me. I ain't done much. But I hope the Lord says, well, you did what you could. You realize that's a great that's a great thing for the Lord to say to you. Uh, you know, you know, I kind of know that I didn't do everything I could. But he said about her, she done what she could. That's a good thing for him to say. She has come beforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. And I've told you there's some amazing uh, facts about that, the fact that she understood that and did that. It's amazing. 
Uh, in Matthew 25, 21, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I'd certainly like to hear that. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. That would be great to hear. That would finish out my book just right, right there. I think that's what you need to be shooting for. Well done, thou good and faithful. When he gets to the end of the book, he says, Man, that was a good read. Well done. Well done. Plenty of folks in this book. Plenty of action. Oh, and so many quotes from the King James Bible. God forbid there's a quote from someplace else unless you're laughing at him. You know what I mean? Will your book be a bestseller or a dime store novel? <laughs> For those of you who remember what a dime store was. <clears throat> and I'm going I'm to put this to you. If all you did was, and I'm going to add these things, if all you did was become an astronaut and walk on Mars, win eight gold medals in the Olympic Games, win the Pulitzer Prize for Literature, become the greatest professional athlete of all time, become the greatest actor to ever grace the stage, and become the richest man on the planet and give it all away, your book of life is nothing but a fire starter. You did nothing. Now, what men think, that which is highly esteemed among men, is what? Abomination. If that's all you did, all you have is a fire starter. You say, why? Because not one of those things is eternal. When God saved you, He gave you eternal life. Not eternal death, eternal life. And your book is to be about eternal things. Are there any eternal things in it? I mean, just imagine, do you think, you think somebody that had, I mean, if I did all that, God would still call you a failure. Why? It's not eternal. Next thing is, is, does the possibility exist that you are writing the last chapter right now? Are you writing the last chapter? You say, yeah, I'm getting kind of old. It doesn't matter how old you are. You could still be writing the last chapter. It could be aneurysm and whoop, down you go. For any of us, right now, possible, isn't it? So you could be pinning the last chapter to your book, to your life better write it well you know I think we tend to I think we tend to get toward the end and say yeah I'm done are you alive then you're not done <laughs> can you still can you still I mean I realize you know if, if you're like this you know and they're feeding you okay maybe you're done but if you, can, if you can still talk and walk and, and, and be of service to God, you're not done. You're still writing your last chapter. Better make it a good one. Do you know that how a book ends is more important how it begins? You can handle a bad beginning, but you can't stand a terrible ending. Have you ever, you ever start reading a book and then get to the end and go, Oh, I hate that. That's horrible. <sighs> Why did it end it like that? A moron would not have ended it like that. You know. And you get so upset. Isn't it terrible? You know, this book doesn't start off all that great of a beginning. You look at the first three chapters. But man, have you seen the ending? Or you've read the ending? Talk about spectacular. <laughs> man, that's the ending to a book. It, it answers all the questions. It ends the... You know, they, I love it when they don't end it. You know, I, I, now, most of you just know it as movies, not books. Okay. But they do that in books too, you know, and just kind of trail it off. Why? They don't, they don't know how to end it. In their world, it doesn't. It just kind of goes on. But in God's world, man, he, he has an end of things and a beginning of another. And it shows that eternity, how it just keeps... Amazing. Only book in the world that knows what's going to happen at the end. Why? And they lived happily ever after. Amen? God's children live happily ever after. Now, if you're not God's child, there's another ending for you. And it's not happily ever after. 
He said there in Ecclesiastes 7, 1, a good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Think about that. I mean, we, we celebrate the birth, you know. We're like, you know, you, you, oh, look at the hands out. But you know what's more important than that is the day they die. Why? Their book's finished. The last chapter's been written. The impact they've had on this world has been done, whether good or bad. That's why it's more important. How are you going to impact the world? How's your last chapter? I mean, is it going to be one of those cliffhangers? You know? I know y'all worry about when I get a hair like this, he's going to fall and break his leg. You know? <laughs> Might happen one day. <laughs> Little action. Little action. And last of all, if you don't know how your book is going to end, can I make some recommendations? If you don't know how it's going to end, then write a new chapter. Write a new chapter. You're not done. Listen, if you're not saved, let me help you begin the first chapter. I'll help you today. If you're not saved, I'd be glad to help you write that first chapter. Because as far as God's concerned, you don't have one. But if you are saved, and you don't like the way it's gone so far in your book, if it's a real, you know, um, if it puts people to sleep, if it's droning and, 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 and dreary, then, hey, write a new chapter. There's time. Put, put it, plenty of quotes from the King James Bible in it. You know what that means? You've got to read it before you can put it in there. You know, you put that in your head. Thy word have I hid in my heart. I mean, the Lord's got to be pleased. Listen. He said his, he loves his words. He said they're pure words. Well, if they're in your book, it's good, right? Put them in. Write a new chapter. Make the end a doozy. Amen? If everybody counted you out, show them that you're not out. Make the end a doozy. Hey, finish your book. Paul said he finished his course. He finished his book. He said, okay, I'm going to be done here. Let's see, my execution time is <laughs> just about, eh, about an hour. So he writes down, he says, I've finished my course. I've, I've kept the faith. He figured, it's only an hour. Surely I won't mess up between now and then, will the Lord? Because <laughs> I, I wouldn't write it any sooner. I, I would write till the very last minute, just in case, you know. And he knew he'd finished. How well did he do? Is it full of action? Have you ever read what the man went through? And what he did for the body of Christ? He's a sinner just like you and I. But the book is filled. His book is filled with stuff. And filled with the names of men that he won. Yours should be the same. God has given you the liberty and the power to write what you want. You know that? You can write what you want. Now... Here's some things, some source material that I, I recommend to you. And the reason I write source material is because the things you want in this book, because it's eternal, are eternal things. And I've got a short list here of source material that you need to put in your book. God, why? He is eternal. Be filled with things about God. I mean, how much you love Him, uh, you know, the, your supplications to Him. I mean, just... Filled with the things of God. Why? God's eternal. It ought to be filled with the book. Because the book is eternal. The Word of God. Thy, he, he said, um, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. They're eternal. So you want your book filled with that. And the only other thing, well, there's something else. What is it? Oh yeah, souls. Souls are eternal. So if you're going to fill that book with anything, fill it with those three things. Fill it with God, fill it with a book, and fill it with souls. And I think you'll have a number one bestseller. I think when that book gets read uh, before the angels in heaven, why, you might even get a standing ovation from the angels. I don't know about that. Maybe not. Now, that said, we're going to add some names this morning to our church. 